Hi, I'm Melinda Elmer with Century 21 Masters. Today talking about really what's the purpose of an HOA and what are some things that you want to look for when you're buying a property with a homeowners association. Hi, I'm Melinda Elmer with Century 21 Masters and the Elmer team. Thanks so much for watching my video blog today. People will frequently ask me, what is the purpose of a homeowners association and what are some things that we want to look out for when you're buying into a property that has a homeowners association? Obviously there are some pros to it. If you buy a single family home, all of the care and maintenance of the home is your responsibility and if a roof or a plumbing issue or some major issue comes up, you're solely responsible. The nice thing about a homeowners association is obviously the, all the homeowners in the association share those costs so sometimes it can be a lower expense but also you have to deal with other people so there are a couple of key things that you want to watch for when you are looking at a homeowners association first of all your fees are going to vary widely now a study did, done found that the average homeowners association fees was about 350 dollars a month now, obviously, you can find properties that have much lower HOA fees from $125 a month on up to five, $600 a month for a property that has security guards, a um, concierge, things like that. So you just want to be aware of what your homeowners association fees are going to cost and what that includes. Really, too, the number and the size of the development can also have an effect on the cost as well. And if you have a guard shack, a clubhouse, obviously the more features and benefits, you may have to pay a little bit more for that. You should also find out how much those homeowners association fees have gone up over the years. Now, sometimes the information is available when you are looking at purchasing a property, and sometimes it isn't. So we can do a little bit of research to find out as much as we can about how often those fees have gone up. Sometimes they only go up once every great while, and other times they go up annually. What you get also is going to vary dramatically. So you can obviously buy a home in a managed community that has a guard shack and a clubhouse and a pool, or you can buy a condo in a building that maybe has no amenities other than a washer and dryer and just the exterior maintenance. So that's going to vary and you want to find out what is included and how is it going to affect your finances. Um, so line up all the fees, figure out what they are, <clears throat> and really have a solid understanding of them before you purchase. Some homeowners associations will cover things like basic cable. Some will not. Some will have earthquake insurance. Some will not. Now, there may be additional fees that might apply as well. So <clears throat> different buildings may have fees like a special assessment, which would help cover a roof repair or things like that. So if uh, so a lot of times if a homeowners association fee is lower, you may end up with special assessments over time to replace a roof, elevator, uh, paint the building, or take care of termite for the building as well. Uh, if your fees are higher, it may be because the association has the philosophy of building up a higher reserve so that they don't have to pass a special assessment in order to take care of basic repairs. So something to be aware of there your mortgage approval. Now when you're buying a condo, obviously your homeowners association dues are going to be factored into your mortgage approval. It is an additional expense. So many times if you're purchasing a condo or a planned unit development with a homeowners association fee, it can affect your qualification amount by as much as twenty-five dollars or $30,000 if you uh, versus that single family home that you were looking to purchase. Make sure you read the CCNRs, the rules and regulations which govern the homeowners association. Now, these rules and regulations, again, will vary per building or per community. So you want to make sure you have a solid understanding of what they require. They may say that, for example, all of your curtains on the exterior of the building must be white, or you can't paint your door red or um, you can't have a barbecue on a balcony or patio area. So you wanna just be really sure you're aware of what these rules are and how they can affect you when you're looking at purchasing a property with a homeowners association. Now conflict management, as in any kind of community where people are living together, there's going to be conflict. 
So you want to have a good understanding of how that conflict is resolved and how you work towards making that happen. Now, if for some reason you don't pay your homeowners association dues, something to be aware of is that homeowners associations can foreclose or place a lien on your property in order to obtain that money. So you want to also make sure to be aware of that. You want to be aware of the homeowners association's reputation. And maybe they have a reputation for being a really difficult association to get anything done. Or perhaps they have a property manager that has that kind of reputation. So it's just something to be really aware of when you're dealing with a purchase so that you know what you're getting into. Now compliance with the HOA. Now again, you want to make sure you're really aware of those CCNRs, those rules and regulations, so that you don't have any issues. Because if you do, you may have the homeowner association coming after you for fines, penalties, and it's not really a good living situation to be dealing with on a regular basis. So just make sure you take the time to really know what those rules are and you're going to have to comply with those rules. So you really want to be aware of what kind of insurance your homeowners association has. Now many times you're responsible for the homeowners association, homeowners insurance inside your property and the homeowners association is responsible for anything outside. But frequently, uh, say for example in a condo building, if you have an upstairs neighbor and uh, they have a water leak, then that's going to come down into your unit and it can affect it and you're going to be dealing with several different insurance companies to address the issue. Or for example, if there's a catastrophe, you want to be aware of does your building have earthquake insurance? Um, many, many associations do not because of the high expense. However, there are policies that can allow you to get earthquake insurance for yourself, for your own unit as well. And obviously for a planned unit development where you have a master homeowners association, you can get many different kinds of insurances and the homeowners association may not cover anything in your home. So just really make sure you're aware of what is covered and what is not. So when buying into a homeowners association, you just want to be aware of the pros and the cons to it. There can be a big added benefit by sharing amenities and costs with your neighbors and also maintaining a more uniform look to your building or community. Uh, you're not going to have to worry about a sloppy neighbor or someone who parks cars on the grass or anything like that. But also you have to share that. So you want to know about yourself, how well you can comply with those kinds of rules and regulations that are involved to live in a homeowners association community. If you have any other questions about this or want to look in more into purchasing a property that is within a homeowners association, give us a call at 562-316-2915 or you can reach me at melinda at Thanks so much for watching and please feel free to forward and share this with your friends.